June 10, 1989, discussing Taylor Manor Hospital and the Taylor properties and businesses in Ellicott City. Sally. You don't mind? Oh, you I turn uh, my recorder yeah. on? Is that okay? Sure. Um, the old school up at the top of the hill, next, which would be next to one of the courthouse parking lots now behind well, Charlie Whalen's office. Mm -hmm. And it was on the site where Stromberg, uh, Pete Stromberg, who Darcy's father, mm -hmm. Uh, and the newspaper editor and owner of the Arcane Times built his house. Uh, it was, I think, a three-story frame building with a belfry. And um, when I went to the first grade there, they apparently did not have room in there for the first two, first grade and second grade. So there were two temporary buildings, wooden frame buildings, each one housing the first and second grade, respectively, with a pot belly stove. For, uh, for its heat, and um, my first great teacher there, I used to walk up that hill every day, up the path, that still probably Strawberry Lane? A little bit. Did yeah. they call it Strawberry Lane then? No. No? <laughs> now they might have, but at the age of so Not at of first six, you know, <laughs> right. I wasn't too interested, I guess, in the name of the streets. Right. Um, before you go on, where were you living at this time? Well, these stories are going to get so intertwined. That, I know. <laughs> um, my father moved in to Ellicott City in 1912 and bought a, an existing jewelry store from um, a family by the name of Rosenfeld. And that happened to be directly opposite where Capital Store is today. Um, Do you know what that, what store is in there today? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but it's where the chief of police, Julius, Julius Bush, Bush, was, okay. and later became a um, a black barber shop yes. and some Ross other things in between. Okay, I know. And um, so that was your. It was right next, right next first. to the Tapsco Bank. Yeah, that was your father's was his first, first store. jewelry store. Mm -hmm. uh, he rented that, and then he bought the place two doors up after he got married where Rada's shoe store was, and he owned that, and I was born in that. I well, I was born in, in the hospital in Baltimore because I was a cesarean. I so, uh, But other than that uh, incidental event, uh, I was conceived and, <laughs> and raised in Ellicott City. In the building that was Vada's. Mm -hmm. and, and meanwhile, my father went in the first building. My mother was a Peabody student. He used to ride the streetcar and do a few of lessons and was a music teacher. And he heard her playing this beautiful music from across the street, and that's how he met her and married her. Isn't that? And uh, then he, uh, he built um, he built the store that burned, where Peak has his present things now, and previously was owned by the artist shop owner. Olin. 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 Uh, Marino. Roger Marino owned it. And Roger Marino bought it from the Gendesons, or somebody in between, uh, G-E-N-D-A-S-O-N. And Gendeson ran a dry goods store there. After your father sold it. Sold it to them. So um, we... You know, Jerry, I am not exactly sure, I'm not exactly sure, but I may have been born in that building. It's interesting, I never bothered to find out. To figure because out. Because, I tell you why, I'm sure we owned that building more than, more than five years. Uh, so, I had to be born in that building. So, but your, your father was in, first he was in Julius Wish's building. old building, and mm. then in Vada's, and then he came and then the built this building on the south side of the street and they built that building that was a substantial brick building and uh, um, in that he had his jewelry store and then uh, when he built that building he went into the music business on the side are you sure it was one that burned yes 
and I'll tell you what the sequence of buildings was there. It was a little alleyway mm -hmm. to the west of that. Well, right. it was Taylor's store, which, although we sold it in 1943, they still have her name right. on it. Right, sure. And then um, next to Taylor's store, was, when I was a kid, was Wallenhorst. And Wallenhorst had a men's haberdashery. Mm -hmm. And his son Carter and I were about the same age, and we used to play together. Um, and uh, Libby Zeskin, who was my mother's sister, lived on the third floor over there. And Isidore Zeskin, my father, and my father's brother, Louis Taylor, at one time were three partners in Taylor's store. I see. Uh -huh. um, Louis Taylor died when he was going to pharmacy school in his 30s. An unexpected death, and uh, Isidore decided that he wasn't for the furniture business. He then went to work for the Baltimore Gas Metric Company, and uh, Zeskin then, he was an engineer, graduate of Hopkins, and he joined the Coast Geodetic Survey, U.S. Coast Geodetic Survey, and worked for the government during the remainder of his life. Lived in Shores Bay. Mm -hmm. Worked in Washington. Uh, a good deal of that. The next door down, when I was a kid, was Reed's. Reed's? Mm-hmm. What Which is it? where the restaurant recently was. Dee's Kitchen? Dee's Kitchen. Uh, was it Reed's? Uh, Reed's Drugstore, the famous drugstore. chain. So oh, is that right? Ellicott City only went downhill, as you can see. <laughs> At one time, we had a Reed's Drugstore, a several food, major food stores. Oh. 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 After Wallenhorst, A and P was in that store. I was going to ask you where the A and P was. Yeah. A after Wallenhorst left, yes. you mean the then a the A and P was there. And that was right next to Taylor's exactly. Furniture Store. And then, then was Reed, and then was the American Stores, which previously was called Crooks. Okay. And um, the Dennis Brown's brother was the manager of that for many years. And one night they left their delivery wagon, the little wagon the kids pulled out with the, the wagon tongue out in the street and I was riding down to my grandmother's on my scooter to keep her company while Sam was courting his future wife. <laughs> Hit that handle, went over the handlebars of my scooter and landed on my chin with the pavement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you remember I had that? another split. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, next to that, and then the Butkies owned those buildings along there. And uh, Charles and Gearhart were the two sons of the Butkies. And, uh, now, what, what era are we talking building. about? The 20s? Is this when you mm -hmm. remember? 20s. Because you were born about 19, 1919. 1919. So you were a child and you were yes. playing up and down here. Yeah. Okay. And um, the, um, if you like something we don't have here, no, we, we have coffee and iced tea. This is fine. Um, the the next store in the, to finish out the button mm -hmm. chain of buildings, which were a substantial block of buildings there, was uh, occupied by the c Telephone Company. They had their business offices in the first floor and their switchboard on the second. Later they gave up the first floor mm -hmm. and kept their switchboard on the second, which Mrs. Mann was a chief operator of. Mm -hmm. She was a single lady. And she owned a house on uh, Columbia Pike, right on the major curve there, two-story single house, with an attic, still there. And when my parents sold the store, oh, okay. they moved there. I and remember being told now mm -hmm. that that's where Isaac Taylor lived. Okay. Yeah. That it's brown so, shingle. Yes. Big. Oh, okay. And that's where you lived as a five and six-year-old. No. Oh, no. No. Not yet. By <laughs> then. By then I was in medical school, oh, and I had lived in, in one of the patient buildings up here in, uh, starting 1939, 50 years ago, when we bought this 10-bed uh, hospital. And this had been a, psychiatric, a licensed psychiatric hospital since 1907. Ah, uh, the uh -huh. Tap School Sanitarium. Okay, yeah. let's get into that okay. later. Now, we will get off on okay. too many tangents, right. Joanne, and you'll be here till next week, and I'll never get to <laughs> no, Palm Springs okay. on Tuesday. 
So um, going back to the buildings, the brick buildings, the last brick building was a then CMP. Then comes the alley, yes. to which I used to go to cross the Tiber River to walk up to the school up here on mm -hmm. College Avenue. It was just kind of a passageway, like three or four foot wide or something. Still there. Yes, okay. And we cross the mm -hmm. branch and walk up the hill and come out at the top of the hill up here at the curve where St. Paul and New Cut Road meet in College Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, then next to that was Johnson's Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. This is all in the 20s. Mm -hmm. And um, Johnson lives in a substantial house here next to Kinlock up on College Avenue, where Hogs lived now, is where Kinline lived. Is that lives. where Kinline lived? Oh, okay. Kinline was a builder of both the Taylor store and the Kaplan store. Well, did Kinline, is it Julius who lives Jordan. down on my street now, or was that his father? Is he about your age? Well, the, the Kinline who was a builder would have been uh, older than my father. Well, so. See, Julius Kinline lives down the street from me, and now, he built Valley Mead. Now, he'd be a grandson. No, grandson. I think he probably he's in his 70s, so it might then be his son. he would be his son. son. Okay, so this, the father yeah. was the builder, and mm -hmm. he built the Taylor store? And the Kaplan store. Mm -hmm. and, um, he was a good builder. Uh-huh. Um, and he's the one who eventually sold the Howard House to Sam Kaplan. Okay. According to the newspaper, this, the Howard House sold many times. <laughs> You know, it was up for sale many times in this century. It seemed to not make a go of it. Um, he had it all during my childhood, I think, because Sam or Henson Sam? Or, or Julius. was Julius came on. Because Sam Henson used to take care of the furnace there. I remember they converted the coal before they converted the oil. He took care of the furnace, and as a kid, I would see him going in there every morning and evening to stoke the furnace. That's when it had a second-story porch on it, mm -hmm. with all the elaborate work. Right. Well, okay. after <laughs> Johnson's, next to Johnson's, mm -hmm. which eventually became Sachs. Economy store? Economy store. Okay. Was Lockman's Bakery. Mm -hmm. Next to Lockman's Bakery was my father's store. Okay. And that was brick? Brick front. Mm -hmm. Brick front. Mm -hmm. It may all be brick. I'm not sure. I'll go back and look at my pictures mm -hmm. in the fire because it was brick. Roger owned three buildings. He bought in there. He bought Olin's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he had uh, the frame building that he called the gallery, and then he had the building the Iron Rail was in. But um, some of those had been the Times offices. In um, Prior, right prior to their buying it, they bought it from Stromberg, from what Marianne told me. They know something I don't know. The Times had their office there, and they had a glass front on it. You're right. You're right. In between Johnson and Sachs, or after Sachs. Sachs was there a lot of years, I should know that. It, it's difficult. I think the Times was there after Sachs. Okay. Oh, yes. The Times was there in my life, in, in yeah, after the 60s. Yeah, Times was there after Sachs. Yeah, okay. And, of course, the later on you get, the more blurry things sure. get to me. Sure, right, <laughs> Instead right. of the earlier. The earlier is, is clear. Yeah, I, I was know. closer to, because <laughs> I used to shoot uh, washers oh. And, uh, oh. <laughs> and bottle caps with bed washers in them and wax and up against the some buildings from the, from the street with the kids. See who gets closest to the wall, you know. Like marbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so uh, you're you're, you're exactly right. I remember exactly. Right. So your father built a brick building, or put a brick front. This is directly opposite from where the old post office and the Times office mm -hmm. later was. Okay. Um. Then next door to to that store, I don't remember what it was earlier, but later on blanks clothing store was there. Mm. Next to that was a Hive and Dime store okay. where the bakery was before it burned. Mm -hmm. And next to that was Hope's Hardware store mm -hmm. where Bernie and Tercigal had the restaurant and then was the bank. And it was Pettigore Cards appliance store at one time, mm -hmm. remember? And then the bank. 
Yes, and that became Petty Corps Appliance Store after Hope. Mm-hmm. Hope uh, rolled out. I went to the newspapers yesterday. I went back to the 1925 newspapers so I could pick up some of these names. You know, these. No, oh, you've done very well then. Well, the shops, but it doesn't. It's, it doesn't clearly define where they are. That's the problem. You talked to Sam some time ago. He told you every one. Well, I didn't Except get to talk to him. he went back another him. generation. Well, see, I didn't get to talk to Sam. Everybody's talked to Sam but me. Somebody's got a recording of him. But they don't share it, and they don't know. They, they, will, they will not admit they have it. This Fred, who was uh, in Historic Ellicott City, taped Sam back in the 70s. And I've never been able to get a copy of it. Uh, mm. He's not in the area anymore. And Fred uh, who? What was his name? Fred Schultz. Fred Schultz. Fred Schultz. He was an artist, media production. Mm. And I have never... Somebody said, gave a marvelous talk up here for the patients last year and I listened to it. I happened to bump, happened to be here, and I heard a fellow setting up in there. I said, well, I wonder what the patients are watching. He's could setting have been up a Herb style Yol. show. Was it Herb Yol? Herb Yol? J-O-H-L? From, from Columbia. Columbia, yeah. That mm -hmm. would be Herb. That's right. right. And he was very good. Mm -hmm. And very accurate, I must mm -hmm. say. Because I remember of the zillion facts that he, there was only one that I went up later and said, no, this is the way that was. One out of all of that, and I thought, see, that, he should get an A-plus for accuracy. <laughs> well, see, he's done a lot of work. Um, right, he's been associated with the train station down there, mm -hmm. the b &O Museum, for a long time, and he's an active volunteer with them. Um, Are you friends? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So you, you have access to his material? Well, I probably have all that he has, but has he, ha, did he interview Sam? Is that what you're saying? Do uh, you I'm, think? I can't be sure. Yeah. But I know somebody interviewed him about every place on the block, starting up away up at the West End, coming down, including Hillsinger Stables, and mm -hmm. that. they were still there when I was a kid. The horse stables at Hillsinger. Well, now Hillsinger is because the, the street was cobblestones when I was a kid, because right. I got hit in the head with one. That's why I know you. Um, Hillsingers was up there by Yates Grocery. Or Hillsingers is exactly where the present post office is. Okay, and then Higginbotham's was a little bit below that. Mm -hmm. All right. And then Higginbotham was he there? And then he later moved down to below Yates. Oh, was Higginbotham's up there in the first place? See where yeah. Higginbotham's wound up. What was there? Next door was Butterfish, mm -hmm. going up toward Yates, and then next between Yates and Butterfish, the Taylor was um, um, Sigler's Plumbing. You know the, the mm -hmm. young fellow who got killed as a volunteer fireman. That oh, was his family. Okay, I didn't connect the. Mm -hmm. I, I knew the name. Joe Ziegler. Right. Ziegler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stigler. Was Stigler. It? Stigler. Stigler. Yeah, my classmate. <laughs> Stigler, and uh, they were fighting a fire, I think, on KV's house on uh, Thunder Pike, and the chimney fell on Christmas Eve. Um, there is a uh -huh. book out which I used, and that's the history of the fire department. And Mr. Shipley wrote that, and he's documented, you know, all the fires mm -hmm. in Ellicott City. He, uh, Harrison Shipley, whose mm -hmm. father was also a sure. part of that. Sure, no Harrison very well. Edie. Turn this off just a moment. Turn it off just a moment. Thank you. On the corner of Columbia Pike, right. um, where it turns the corner from Taylor's store, the first building there for many years had on the second floor the Planned Parenthood. There was a Planned Parenthood there. Uh -huh. Plenty. Uh -huh. On the first floor, I'm trying to think what preceded uh, our taken it over. But later in the years, we put the Firestone Supply Store there. There was an auto supply and Firestone Supply. And we cut a doorway through into the main tailor store from there. Okay. And since this was about four feet up, there were steps going up. It's still, it's still there today. Was it Malone's Tavern? Did you ever hear it called that? If so, I can't remember. It was before my mm -hmm. time. Uh, because where tailor stores now, and that was built in 1924, 
had been the post office mm -hmm. before the post office moved on the other side of Main Street. And then when I was a kid, that, that old wooden building that was the post office there had been torn down, and I used to make mud pies on that lot, so I know it was empty. Before yeah. you all built there? Mm -hmm. Before your father built So I had to be three years old or uh -huh. something, you know. We, we, it was built in 24, so I was five years old at that time. Mm -hmm. um, the next door around the corner. The little frame building, um, is that? This one in the middle here mm -hmm. was a shoemaking shop. Okay. And uh, the next one there was um, a Greek restaurant, the more substantial, uh, higher. Well, was it a grocery store also? Not that I can remember. But it. Here Russell, again. Yeah, Russell Moxley said it was a. Acme at one time. Mm -hmm. But in your time it was a shoe repair? No, that was a restaurant. Oh, a restaurant. And uh, uh, above it lived Long's. And I went to school with their daughter. Um, she was in my class, so I spent some time mm -hmm. with playmates. Do you know whose restaurant that might have been? A Greek fellow. Greek? Was it Greek? Mm hmm. And his. Was it Coronas before he moved down the road? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Just doesn't come to me. That's okay. Me. But he had a relative who came over from Greece who had invented an engine that worked without pistons. Everybody he was trying to get my father to invest some money with mm -hmm. this fellow. This guy was a genius and a forerunner of the jet engines on airplanes today. Exactly. Did he ever do anything with that? Yeah, did somebody. Oh, he did. I don't know what ever happened, but it was his idea. Was that building altered? Is that see that's a cinder block front? No, that's the way it was built in was my it? time. So it was not that old a building. No, I don't. It, um, I don't know what year it was built, but it. I only know it as it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, then next to it where the Taylor sign is on that warehouse was... Mm -hmm. um, Parlette Ford, is that? Yes, uh, and, and, the, and before Parlette Ford, there was always a garage. I'm trying to think of well, where did Bud, Bud Ridgely make his soda? And then Bud Ridgely made his soda in the building to the right of this. Wessels? Which, which Parlette Ford oh. used for his... Uh, uh, office and parts department. Was that it? Wessels floors? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he went back this way. Okay. Originally. The and building so. was connected in the back or something? Um, I think he may have used the, the rear of this, whether the rear of this other place was part of the bottling. I remember the bottling there. Uh huh. Then the next house above, that little house, it's very colonial looking back. Mm -hmm. um, I think Cushwa lived there for a while, and for a while Cushwa lived here. He was a state trooper, very imposing, almost like Patton. Well, was that building built in your lifetime? Mm -mm. Before, as far as I don't know. I don't know. Uh -huh. It could have been built, excuse me, when I was a kid. And when I don't you were remember. a kid. I, I think this was one of the more recent buildings. It's hard, and yeah. then above this is Taylor's warehouse and garages, where I spent many hours. And those were liveries, weren't they? Or were they built as your warehouses. Somebody said they were old livery stables. Might have been before my time. Mm -hmm. If they were converted. There were lots of livery stables because of all... From 1924 on, they were our warehouse. You remember Green Cross Garage? On oh, very well. Other side? Charlie Scott's father owned it. Mel Melvin Scott. Uh -huh. Owned the Green Cross Garage. The Chevrolet dealer way back. And then did Charlie Miller take over the Green Cross before he opened Miller Chevrolet? Yes. And then he, he bought the business from uh, Scott. Melville Scott's, from Charlie Scott's father, Melville Scott. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charlie, that's where Charlie was. And, and the whole building is over the stream. There's right. almost nothing. There was a little basement there where they used to wash cars down the basement. Um, you could and, go uh, from the that pipe, That building, right? incidentally, has got to be soaked with years of grease. That is fire truck. <laughs> keep your fingers crossed. Well, that's uh, isn't that where Taylor? That's that's, stores that's stuff now. Then, then after Charlie Miller left, we took it over to the warehouse. 
if we needed more warehouse space. Mm -hmm. so we sold for a 50 mile radius all around uh, Ellicott City. And um, uh, then, um, let's see. When it was a Green Cross garage, do you remember that the automobiles could come in off the pike? Oh, yes. And go right downhill? Uh, somebody told me that what one of them went right to the door or something. Do you remember any of those experiences with the. <coughs> Where did you keep your delivery trucks? In those warehouses? If you were selling, you kept your trucks in the mm -hmm. sheds along the pike. Yeah. And that's why you needed so many. All of, the, all of those were trucks. But also merchandise? Mm hmm. Both. Oh, I see. There are two, some is two floors, some is three floors above there. And you never had a fire. All those sheds and all those years. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. I mean, there's been so many fires in the town. Mm. Um, yeah, well, that's how the theater got built up at this end. I was going to ask you. Because Earl Rohde owned the theater, the yeah. Earl Theater down the other end. Mm -hmm. And we eventually bought that after we built the theater, and, and there wasn't really room for two theaters, so it was natural. We just took the other one over. Did you run the Earl, too? Mm-hmm. As a theater? For a while, after Ed Rohde sold it. You, but you built the new Ellicott Theater mm -hmm. after the fire. There was a grocery there. store there, mm -hmm. which a fellow named Berger ran. He was the, he had a limp, remember? Very nice guy. And that was burned by fire. Just burned out. That in the Chinese laundry next mm -hmm. door. And, um, So we had this um, lot and weren't sure what to do with it and the decision was made to build the Alicathea, which was very modern for its time. Was and it popular? Uh, was it mm, successful? Oh yes, then? very much so. The gas station was torn down before you built your theater, the gas station that was out in the Pike Fair? Um, no, I don't think so. I think after you built the station? Yeah, that always was a, a standard old station. Um, and there were pumps across, you know, at, at the Parlette place, too. Uh, pumps um, where people could buy gas. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he sold Sinclair. The one in that corner was a uh, was standard oil. Um, and then Charles Figgy, who was present county councilman, his okay. father's grocery store was next to the Harrod House, directly opposite the theater in that stone building that has the lodge on top, mm -hmm. the Eastern Star and up above there. I, I remember it as Paul's Market, but it was yeah. Brown's before that. And, and before that was Figgy's. Figgy's. Yeah. So the Brown who ran it after Figgy is the Brown who used to run Crooks. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. Shops did have a tendency to move around town, didn't they? I mean, just like your father moved from one building to the other. I think he did more moving. He and the Times office and Charlie Miller probably mm -hmm. moved. Then yeah. The others, I don't recall them moving. But most, uh, a lot of people who had shops didn't necessarily own the building. That's right. They just rented. Mm -hmm. Because one of the newspaper clippings said that Mrs. Kraft was the wealthiest woman in town. Mm -hmm. And I know the deeds show that she owned lots of property. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was renting, obviously, a lot of buildings to others. Um, the hunts also seemed to, were there hunts around when you were a boy mm -hmm. or were they gone by that time? They were still? They were there. I think uh, Jack Hunt Mayfield was from that family, I think, okay. and later became judge. Mm -hmm. They owned a lot of property early in the 20th century. I see their name in the deed. Mm -hmm. Just like then, you know, when Sam started buying so much property. Mm -hmm. That's what got me so confused. I just could not follow some of those purchases. And, um, you know, some people would buy one lot and a half of another lot. And, um, mm. and Very then complicated. There, were, there are corporations, you know, that are formed. And then there's family transactions. And it, <laughs> It gets really complicated, but um, I've been. I want to be as accurate as possible. Now, Rosenstock, 
was Rosenstock Jewish? Mm-hmm. There was great competition between Rosenstock and Kappa. Was all the people who sold clothing and dry goods were Jewish, and they were all friendly or fierce competitors. Uh-huh. And not really enemies, but... Competitors. They would... Um, like Gendison was yeah. Jewish? Mm-hmm. Okay. It was Rosenstock, Sachs. Gendison. Well, Sachs was after Gendison. They weren't competitors. Then two blanks were related. The one was where the clock shop was, and the other was across the street from Kaplan. And I think he was the one who was, he called himself Chief John. Uh, it must have been John Blank. When I was working that's through... Next, that's in between Vadas and Wush, that, where, where okay. Blank was. They were all rivals. And, um, of course, Kaplan had the only really modern store and, and had, uh, well, Kaplan's, when I was a kid, sold four charm shoes, men and women, mm-hmm. Manhattan shirts, Stetson hats, Hot Shopman Mark suits, wow. or, or Sam would measure and have them made by mm-hmm. just tailoring in town in mm. order. They had very... Very high class merchandise for a little town. Right. Well, I was reading the ads yesterday of when they closed their store and they moved down temporarily across from Kraft's Meat Market. That's when I was got burned. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. When, when they were. This is the dermatologist that did this to uh-huh. me just the other day. But uh, it was in that period, I was five and a half years old. Or six, or six years. I think I just started school. And um, Fourth of July, and I was walking from our place, which had just been built a year or two before that. The new store. The new store. Uh-huh. And Captain's was built in '26, so it probably was 1925. So I was six years old. And I was walking from my house down to my grandmother's, who was then where Great Pains is now, mm-hmm. and where the... Temporary Captain store. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And where one of the Greek restaurants was there before Correct. it moved down, the mm-hmm. Florence was there later. Mm-hmm. And so they were in there while they were building, and uh, when I was passing Valmas, the other candy kitchen, as we called them, there were some teenagers on the steps there, and as I walked down the street, one of them shot a, a Roman candle or a skyrocket and hit me head on. And I went up in flames. Oh my! Yeah. And uh, I was in the hospital for three weeks. I I nearly died initially, but I remember. Of course, I, I went out immediately. I remember nothing except the ball, or the fire, and um, wasn't in any pain or anything, which was in shock, was stunned. I came to. They carried me into another drugstore, which was next door to where my grandmother was. That was a that another drugstore at that time. A new drugstore um, that was Clark's Hardware and the drugstore came in there after that. I read that. Okay. Yeah. And then the movie was on the other side yes. of it. Uh-huh. They're, they're all favorite. And um, I remember coming to, so to speak, and I was sitting on a chair in the back room of this pharmacy and um, the druggist was had a pound tin of ungentine and he was putting ungentine on my and my skin was coming off my arm like brown paper. It just, it just was Weren't you lucky that the pharmacist was there? Would that I don't know whether he did me good or harm, good. but uh, then Dr. Was it Dr. Cotton? No, it wasn't the same. There was an old time Dr. Gamble. Uh huh. From down the street. Up the street. I mean, up the street. Yeah. Right. Okay. He, I think he was on the corner of, of where Church Road is, I mean, where Courthouse Avenue is now. I think he was right next to Dr. Bishop's Brick House, wasn't it? Court, Court Avenue? He was across from where Hosley's was later. Okay. Yeah, he was right on, right there. Yeah, somewhere around there. And he was a really, for his time, he was old time. Uh-huh. Which is, wasn't good. Yeah. And no. he put compressed bandages on, and that oh, was that a mistake, because everything oh, stuck. Oh, my gosh. And uh, yeah. they took me to my house, and then the next day, they my head blew up like a shade and I couldn't see because everything was so swollen. And, they didn't uh, take you to a hospital? And I went to a hospital. I mean, the first day they didn't? 
No, I, I did, wasn't treated properly. It never affected your eyesight? No, I was very lucky. Yeah. Now, the boys, were they being mischievous, or was that an accident? Oh, sure. It was, I mean, did I they think they were being mischievous. Adolescents didn't know how serious... They really, I mean, they yeah. didn't mean to shoot it up. They oh, shot they aimed it. at me, I'm sure. <gasps> to scare me, probably, you know. But whether they meant to hit me, or just to scare me. Do you know who they were? Later on, I did. And I don't think a lot of people know I know who. But Sarah House, who, of the House family, you probably heard a good deal about them. I haven't, but, you know, I've read across um, the name, but I've never heard much about their, their Their father and mother, Sarah Henry Harry, uh, was, he, he was a, a rugged, tough guy, their, their parents. And uh, he did a lot of stonework. The stone wall down there by the school was built by him and his sons. And that wall will never fall down. The wall on Newcut Road? Mm-hmm. I've noticed that. And they built the stone house up there next to the uh, funeral home, and they built it. Slack? Mm-hmm. Funeral. Stone house next to it. Then they built another house further up. Solid stone, you see them, uh, like a butler quarry type of stone. And that's rather new. Those are in your lifetime that they built that. Oh, yeah. And um, Sarah House, at that time, lived with her family over in the second floor over what's now the um, restaurant across the street from uh, the, the uh, Coca Lane. Coca Lane. Uh-huh. She was looking out the window and saw it happen. There were a couple Brandenburg boys, and one of them was called Cubby, and because he was quite large, and Cubby was the one. Are they around? And the irony of it is, when I was in between my third and fourth year of medical school, I was, had some plastic reconstruction done. A lot of the scar because used to break down and bleed. It was uh, very, uh, not very good tissue on that side of my face. And he and I were on the same floor of the hospital. He was dying of a kidney problem while I was having this operation. Isn't that something? Isn't that? But nobody ever, he never came forward and said, look, um, it was a mistake or anything. But uh, we knew, and we just didn't, you know, it was already done. What could she do? Was there any... Um, Brandenburgs were a nice family. Was there any prejudice because you were Jewish, do you think? Mm. At that period of time, was, was there taunting or...? I think um, the prejudice came out in anger. Um, if, um, if somebody was angry with me, they wouldn't say, damn you, Taylor. They'd say, you damn Jew, yeah. because that was, that was the easiest thing to say. Right. So I wasn't an individual. I was a member of, mm -hmm. of some kind of group that the prejudice was directed against. But you see, during the Depression, in all my teen years were during the Depression. Everybody had it tough. <laughs> tough. And everything we had was on display in the window. Yeah. You know, we had a jewelry store with jewelry on display, furniture on display. And people were just, for all the mills weren't operating, surrounded by four mills, a lot of whom were our customers. And uh, the one thing to my father's credit, during the Depression, he never repossessed anything that he sold. Mm -hmm. He knew the people were honest. Mm -hmm. They knew him, he knew them, and he would say, you'll pay me when you get it. And they used to... You know, there were accounts that we did a lot of installment things that would pay 50 cents a week normally, mm -hmm. or a dollar a week. Some of these people would come in once every two months and pay a nickel. Yeah. But at least they pay, right? Just to say, yeah. you know, I recognize that I owe this. Mm -hmm. Some we never did get, but uh, a lot paid up eventually, 10 years later, something like that. And, and we're loyal customers, and probably to this day, still are loyal customers. Their families. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or yeah. Um, when your father built, bought this in 1939, you were still in medical school? I just started first year. So somebody operated it for him? Yes. Well, we, had, uh, we had, um, we had um, several medical directors. One was a Hopkins professor, Dr. Leslie Hillman, who was here from 40 to 42. And he changed the name with our permission mm -hmm. from, uh, he was a one-third we, we took him in, my father and I were 50-50 partners at that time. We took him in, as a, and we all were third. Mm -hmm. He stayed here two years and went back to duty in the Navy, sold us back his third. 
When you bought but it. He named it Pinel Clinic uh -huh. after Philippe Pinel, the famous French physician who took the mentally ill out of their chains in prisons uh, and put them in hospitals. And no longer could they be on exhibit if you pay the fee to go to prison and see the people mm -hmm. in chains. That was 1791 when he did it. But unless you studied psychiatry, you didn't know who Philippe Pinel was. And so in 54, I change the name to Taylor Mountain Hospital. And in fact, my wife doesn't go to part for doing that. She said, put your own name on it. By then, I'd had some personal analysis, too, and I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you bought it, it had been the Patapsco Manor Sanitarium yes. for a while, or all that time? All that time, from 1907 to 1939. And what kind of problems? To 1940, when we changed the name. Were they treating? Same. Psychiatric? Mm-hmm. Nervous and mental, it was, they had some schizophrenic patients here, some depressed patients here, and also alcohol. They did, mm -hmm. yeah. Is this where uh, Aubrey Bodine came for treatment? Is there any record of that? If so, I wouldn't know it. I've never known that because um, there were two other places in Ellicott City that were confused with us, and we were never an alcoholic retreat, per se. We were always a hospital. Well, where were but that? Dr. Seliger had a place. Uh, that eventually became a nursing home that the Clarks owned uh, next to the old armory. Schaefer's. Next, nursing yes, home. Schaefer's. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was a alcoholic treatment. Yeah, Seliger, who was a Hopkins professor, ran that as an alcoholic treatment center for a while. Mm -hmm. And then the old uh, castle here, for a while, was also an alcoholic treatment center. But Somebody you know, else it, it was also a uh, one, one on College Avenue. So we used to always yeah. get uh, conf people confusing us. And uh, because Manor is in the name, uh -huh. and of course yeah. this was an old manor uh, back in the, in the uh, 1800s. Well, you know, I haven't researched that. Do you know, was yeah. this also the Hazelhurst property? No, this uh, was a manor uh, owned by the brother of the governor of Maryland. Um, um, I want to say Warfield. Uh, Gaither. Gaither? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I have not the researched Gaper's this thing. piece of property, um, so I'm not. Well, when you bought it, there were some stone buildings. There's still the one stone house, right? Over, right behind you. Uh huh. And the twin to that was a carriage house. Oh, I see. Which we tore down in 1960 to make room for the addition to the what's now the adolescent building. I hated to tear that down. We used to we used to have our occupational therapy shop in there. And it was a twin to that building, and it had a keystone in the arch dated um, 1860, and we tore it down exactly 100 years later. Oh, mm -hmm. Did you keep, uh, save that keystone? Got a picture of it. I got a, a, a picture of you, I think, taking a picture of, of, of the building. It of, was in the newspaper? Of the builder uh -huh. up there with the sledgehammer. We, that was symbolic before they got the... In there. Well, this old house, I mean, the stone house that's back here now, was that a residence? Yes. Uh -huh. It was not, was, well, what buildings did they use for the sanitarium? Are they still here? The original uh, hospital is not still here. Uh -huh. It burned. Uh -huh. And it burned the same night that um, the college burned on uh, down here where the school was originally built. In 23? Mm-hmm. Vandalism? Uh, or? Lightning? No, it did, never did discover. And that's how, when Mr. Jones lectured here, I had Mr. him, the man you were talking about from the B&O station, the fellow oh, lecture. Yeah, uh, Herb Yol. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yol lectured. He had a photocopy of a Times article of that fire. I'd never seen it, and he sent me a, a, a copy of it which hmm. I have. Of the but fire he, he, here, of this? Yes, it mentioned both fires, and uh, mentioned that uh, the firemen never got here because that one was occupying them, so this one just burned. And uh, Dr. White evacuated the patients and staff, and there were no casualties. But um, they were both the same time. Isn't that something? And uh, I, nobody's ever said there was any connection, but was that a frame building, wooden, rather than stone? Or I think that was frame. There's mm -hmm. an old picture someplace. 
of that. And um, so that present site now um, has our dining room kitchen built on it, the notation to the building, it's on it. Um, but that burned in 23, and of course, um, the other buildings were built right after that. Well, at that time, the A, A building must have still been there, the one next to our present house, because he said he moved the patients over to that existing building. Then in the early 30s, the, what we call the B building was built. Those are the white frame buildings. Uh, that's a stucco, really, that's a tile and stucco building. It's building tile underneath hollow tile. That's the one that had a fire. The one that had a fire was our was our admission building at the time, and now it's our adolescent building. It's all been rebuilt to that part. And that had a fire on the eve of a Valentine's party we were going to have for the patient. Oh, wow. So it burned on the February 13th of sometime in the 60s, early 60s. No, it burned in 68 because this building had just been yeah. occupied and we moved every we had to vacate the building because it built we burned through the nerve center of the building right through all the heating and uh, electrical apparatus so everybody moved to this building and uh, it was amazing what you can do you know when you have no choice and we operated very well with, under, under unusual conditions yeah. and it took us the time to rebuild that so the whole building didn't burn, but the whole building had to be evacuated because the fire went. For Only for the two high holidays for Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. So you didn't close the business and went in then. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you didn't attend regularly anywhere. No, my father had a uh, Hebrew teacher come out by streetcar three times a week. Oh, I to give my brother and I private lessons because we didn't go to school to learn what to do to be bar mitzvah. So until my brother, who was two years younger, was bar mitzvah and then we stopped. So it was a period of probably about five, four or five years altogether we came out. Mari Shockett, who many years, he and Julia Pickett, and his friend edited the Northwest Star or something like that. Well, um, so they, many times they came out, my brother and I were out playing baseball, and we had to send a maid out to find us <laughs> a half a mile away. <laughs> Where would you play baseball in Ellicott City? <laughs> uh, a distance. Oh, uh, you did? Uh, yeah. Around 40 acres or up um, on Newcut Road or up where the old school was. There was a place to play up there. When you were growing up, was 40 acres Where the original cleared? school was. Yeah, you mean the old school where you went to mm -hmm. first and second grade, right? First grade. Mm -hmm. first grade. When, when, you know, it's hard to believe 40 acres was recreation because it's all, it just doesn't appear. Only the bottom. Now, was the bottom between the road and the river? Between the road and the hill. Mm -hmm. Between the road and the hill. Yeah, and there's a... Never, never dying spring that comes out of there. It had excellent water for many years. People used to carry bottles up there. Uh -huh. And of course, the uh, the priests the, who were uh, the seminary the seminarians got their water supply from there. They put in an ingenious uh, gravity feed from up there. The old uh, the old springs on our property up there, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. Property next to Sam Street. Um, the um, the 40 acres, now did they have field day when you were, or rally day, whatever they called it, when you were a youngster and, and you go to 40, 40 acres and compete, did you? We had it at, at the elementary high school site. Oh, I see. You weren't using that. I don't think so. I'm trying to think back now. I don't remember any, any, I don't remember going to 40 acres except the, Swim pool there. Right now, the swim pool was that the one that Sam built? Sam built that. But there was Before some that. kind of swimming hole there. Yeah. Same I place. Mm -hmm. Same place at the newer. Yeah. And did uh, he build yeah. that as a camp for? He, he built it mm -hmm. for children. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and it rented it to his hand. Camp Jimmy or something is that? What? Something. Uh, I can remember Sam 
telling me something about it. But it was for children that were they had some physical needs or no? It was just a summer camp. Just a summer mm -hmm. camp. Um, do you remember the parochial school there at uh, at the old bank building? The Catholic uh, school for St. Paul's. Oh sure. Now, at the time you were going to school, there was no integration. So you had no black youngsters in your school. That's right. They were going down to that one at Rogers Avenue. In fact, uh, my father got himself on the school board because mm -hmm. he didn't like the way things were being run. And they weren't being run as they should have been. Mm -hmm. and being a businessman, he thought they certainly weren't running a business-like fashion. There's a lot of cronyism. He got appointed on the school board, and his friend Joe Donovan, himself from getting him appointed, Joe Donovan was a local attorney and a state senator, and Joe was one of the princes that ever existed. He was a good friend of my father's. They both really cared a lot about each other. Joe got him appointed. And they had a superintendent by the name of Phillips, who was very bigoted. And, um, hello. And Phillips um, would not build a high school for the black. And he wouldn't hire a Jewish school teacher. That both of those bothered my father. So ultimately, he saw that Phillips got retired, fired, retired, replaced him with. Uh, Herbert Brown and then John Union. John Union was probably one of the best school superintendents ever. He was my teachers, as was Herbert Brown. But he also wasn't very supportive of black education, was he? Oh, I think both of them were fine. Well, anyway, there was a, before that time, the, a black kid, if he wanted to go to high school, first of all, he had to have the gumption. I had to go to Baltimore City. And that was a lot of travel in those days. And you had to ride the streetcar all the way in and back. And then you had to have the money for the streetcars, 15 cents, which was a lot of money, too, in the days when you could buy a watermelon for a nickel. Mm -hmm. And um, my father was instrumental in getting the first black high school built in the county. Now you're talking about Cooksville or Tubman? I, I'm not sure which one it was. I, of course, everybody associates Harriet Tubman School, but yeah. I'm not sure which one it was. When, Whatever uh, one went up first. Yeah. How late was your, when, when was your father on the school board, the last? He was on there when I graduated high school, which was in 35. 35. So uh, he was in there in the 30s. That would have been Cooksville School out there on 97. That was um, the original. The earliest that there was a black. And then another thing I remember that stands out that the school teacher there was a family ran a country store with one gasoline pump out Route 40, it was, it was 144, it was called then. Rosini's? Uh, no, past Rosini's, um, called Ugent. They were a Jewish family that lived in isolation. <laughs> the nearest Jewish family were Ellicott City. No, here they were, somewhere between Frederick and uh, and and um, I think they were Poplar Springs. Oh, I see. And uh, they had a very lovely daughter. I remember, she was very pretty and very sharp. And she went to Towson or wherever and got her degree. And Phillips wouldn't hire. My father was on the board then, and he said, "Mr. Phillips." He didn't outright accuse him of anything because Phillips had an excuse. I don't, you know, I don't think she can make it, and so on. He said, "I want you to hire Miss Eugene, and if and I want you to have somebody carefully observe how competent she is. And if she isn't competent, I'll fire her myself." That's how she got hired. And she did get. And she got hired. She was a martyr school teacher, lovely person. Mm -hmm. oh. Those were the prejudices. They were with people who just had difficulty handling any change. And, uh, but I think 
outside of that, um, at one time the Gendersons, a uh, boy and a girl, and my brother and I were the only four kids who were Jewish in the whole school system here, 407 kids in Ellicott City, and then when the Gendersons graduated, my brother and I were the only one. Um, your father never... And I was about valedictorian in my class when I graduated. Yeah. Well, for you to go on to medical school, that was probably something really that Ellicott City didn't see very often, did they? I'll tell you something <laughs> interesting, Joanna. I was small frame, so I was never a, a soccer or basketball player. But I could run, and track was something I could do. So our track team won the relay for the county. We thought we were so good. I'm mean, talking about, I had this similar feeling later in going to Johns Hopkins University from being out at Torrey here. <laughs> but when we went to the stadium in Baltimore <laughs> and we met all the other track teams from all the other high schools, all the other county winners, we came in late. <laughs> 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 they were all. <laughs> Right. So you 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 got you kind of got the you got a better view of the world. <laughs> I'm sure of that. From, but some of these people were very provincial around here, and they just didn't have that broader view of the world. They never never got in the way. Yeah. Um, as far as the furniture store, you know, your tailors really didn't have any competition in Ellicott City, did they? There were no other like there were all the clothing stores. Yeah, that's right. Okay. To become charity, I said, "Well, it's happening. It's it's, it's about there." Now. <laughs> I'm sure you have. She's a do-gooder. She's worked for the, all the volunteer organizations. Is she married? Single. She's she lives in San Francisco right now. She's in Georgia going to school. Uh, the newspapers always said some nice things about your father and his attitudes and his uh, associations in the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't remember which newspaper exactly, whether it was the, eight, uh, the Century Edition of the Times, but they quoted him as saying that he thought everybody should grow up in a small town. Mm -hmm. And that was one reason that he came here. <laughs> I think it has something to say. I think so, him. too. I think um, to leave Baltimore and come out to what was at that time in 1912, and the hinterlands, because my mother, when she had to go into town when she was a kid out here, they had to walk a rutted road to Catonsville to get the horse car there. Oh my. The streetcar never came out to Ellicott City until much later okay. when they made the cut through the pass there. They were in Baltimore County just on the other side of the river. Mm -hmm. So as a kid, she and her sister, if they wanted to go to Baltimore, it was, it was a, a big effort. And uh, when I was going in as a kid to get radium, I had radium treatment on my face after that burn. I would ride the streetcar in with my mother, and I know after after we went through that pass, and the, you could see the floorboards of the car snake mm -hmm. if you were in the back. I was hanging out the back window. <laughs> 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 I remember that very well. <laughs> I never liked <laughs> that old number eight. Now your mother old was number nine. I guess it was number you, nine. Your mother was oh, Sam's snake. sister. Yes. Right. Okay. Sam and Libby and Rose, right. sister and brother. Um, tell but me uh, one other thing, uh, you know uh -huh. the parking lot, uh, you know the history of that? The present Ellicott City public parking lot? The one back of the post office? Yes. No. Uh, my father uh, was very concerned about parking because, you know, <laughs> having a business sure. on Main Street was a problem for the theater. And so was Charlie Miller, Red Miller Chevrolet. So we owned. We donated half, and Charlie Miller donated half the land. That's how we got a public parking lot there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. There were some houses or some frame buildings back there. Do you remember? Yeah. And we you tore them down? Or? Well, I don't think there were any down in that stream valley uh -huh. where the parking lot is. But uh, if there were, I don't remember. But Up closer but to the back of the post office, were there some, a couple of houses there? Maybe they I were gone. I don't remember. Could have been. But the two houses that were on the edge of the parking lot, the same parking lot that, that Mrs. Mann's house that my parents bought was on, uh -huh. further down, right. were some houses where the Giffins lived, and then uh, a couple houses, and then, then right on the curve were two isolated houses. 
And in the upper one, Marion Ferguson lived, who was my French teacher in high school. You're talking about on the pipe now? On the Columbia pipe. Mm -hmm. That's the upper of the two narrow houses. And we owned that. We originally sold it to Marion Ferguson uh, afterwards, because she lived in a long time. She wanted to buy it. And then she and Harry House were date, dating for years. Hmm. They were both beyond the age of which you expected people to get m married for the first time. Mm -hmm. They married, both of them, uh, way up in years, and I think uh, he was courting her for, oh, maybe 10 years. And uh, then they both lived in that house. And uh, Harry House, the House brothers were very good with their hands, very solid people. And so he, I'm sure he rebuilt a lot of that house. Mm -hmm. We had rebuilt some. He rebuilt it for Marion Ferguson. Mary. Is that the frame house across from your, the frame houses that are kind of up on the hill by the cemetery? Or? No, it's on the same side of the road as, as my parents' house, oh, except okay. it's on the curve before that curve. Oh. And it's right above the parking lot. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Now, were, did Ambrose Cross live close to you? Next to you my were, parents' house. When you were growing up? I never really lived in that you house. You didn't live in that house. Okay, I now had a room there, but I never used it except when I came back from my internship and stayed at home for maybe one night a month or something. Now, where is it that you live then? I lived in the hospital. Up here? Mm -hmm. yeah, either this hospital while I was going to medical school. But by me as a boy. Or I lived in hospitals for my internship and, and residencies. No, I mean before. You I lived, lived over the Taylor store in Main Over Street. Okay, over mm -hmm. the Taylor Third store. Third floor apartment there. A third floor apartment. Third floor. We had a very nice apartment there. Was there a second floor apartment? Or no, the second floor was a store, but we had our kitchen on the second floor, so we didn't have to run so far. Okay. So the kitchen was on the second floor, the apartment was on the third floor, where we had a bedroom, three bedrooms, a dining room and living room. And um, we had a dumbwaiter, which still is there, I guess. Is that still an apartment? Do you think, or do you think they use it all for stuff? No, the whole thing is, is store display now. And later, before we sold the store, we we built out the second and third floor in the back half of the store. It had been designed for a full three stories, but we only had them in the front. Mm -hmm. So where were you living before you moved into the new building? You were just real little then. Yeah, it's only five years old. Right. You were living well, above one of the other stores? Yeah, above, we always lived above the store. Of the store. Everybody lived above the store. Yeah, store. right, right. That was mm -hmm. pretty much the way the town operated. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you didn't own the building, would you still The only people who didn't live above the store were Brown, who had the grocery store, and um, Kramer's lived above the store. They had what's now a, a little shop next to the Phoenix. There was a grocery store there. Okay, at one time that was French's, wasn't it? Next to the Phoenix? When, it, when the Phoenix was Thistle's? Before it was Balmus's? Oh, you're really... You you're, probably didn't get that. You are that. really, really going back in my memory, and I can't... Well, know. Monica talked, Monica Rothy, who was Monica Colbert. Did yeah. you know Monica? Yeah. Okay, she talked about very pretty. She was a yeah. young girl. She was a beauty. You know she's still around. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, Judge Fisher's secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, I called her the other day. Her mother's in the hospital and is very ill. But um, I had a question and she said she'd talk to her mother about it. But she wrote up a little piece one time and it said something about, I thought she said that her French's was next to her grandfather's Thistle's place there on the corner, which was the Phoenix. See, Fizzles at one time was Balmas. Had also he also had the place next, that was her next uncle. to the next to the next bank. To the bank. That was her uncle. Mm -hmm. That was another Fizzle, but it was both Fizzle. Yeah, you know I probably would remember this if I strained real hard, but it's really no. That's that's okay, but <laughs> but Ray Dorn had that in recent times. And you have done so remarkably well. And then. Um, I look and I, you know, pe uh, like when I was talking to Russell Moxley, he would say, well, Kern's Barbershop was here and then it was 
<laughs> you know, it's hard to keep track of where these barber shops seem to move a lot. I think they were renting buildings. You know, people who didn't own their building yeah. rented, and for whatever reason. Like the cabies rented and the Babylons rented and uh -huh. the barber right. shops. And See, I took my cabies were descendants yeah. of the Babylons. Oh, were they related? Mm-hmm. Oh, I find that so much. So the Cavies and the Babylons intermarried like I'm pretty people. sure. Check with somebody else and see if that isn't so. Okay. Because they lived across the river in Oella, just on the other side of the river at one time. Mm-hmm. Um, just a, above right. the little tavern there. Um, did you remember Kirk Kirkwood's shoe oh, sure. store? I was one of their favorite babies, so to speak. Oh, is that right? Little kids with two elder dispensers. They were dispensers at the time, and I was uh, four years old. Okay. And they had a little shop next to Kaplan's. They were lovely, lovely people. And I would go in there, and we used to talk. And, uh, she, my, my father was building in 24, and I remember this, they gave me a nickel, probably 23 or 24, so I was uh, probably four years old. And they said, uh, Irving, what are you going to do with it? And I'm going to give it to my father because he's having trouble <laughs> getting financing on his building. I don't know what words I used, but yeah. it happened to be reality. Because <laughs> they, everybody told me it was crazy to put up a building of this size, or a this size in the town. So he had a commitment from Patapsco Bank before he started for a loan. And you know, in those days, uh, your words are bond. Mm -hmm. Still is. Patapsco Bank chickened out. And they said, sorry, but we feel it's too risky. And my father was really up the creek there for a while. He already had the building and committed. Yeah. So he, my grandmother, who had a Captain Singh's mother had a had a established reputation. My father, you know, had been in business for twelve years at that time. She'd been in business for a lot longer. And got him a loan from the Savings Bank of Baltimore. And you remembered that as a four year old <laughs> As a four year old I knew he was having trouble. And right. he didn't, you didn't know all the and, details. And so I was gonna give him a nickel and yeah. admit the Kirk one of the Kirkwood ladies had given me that nickel, <laughs> and they were dear people, they were very dear people, and um, the other thing that stands out in my memory was the night, the, mm -hmm. I think I talked to you about this before, the fire truck crashed. You told me something about yeah. that, but I don't and it killed a child on Main Street or something, is that? Seriously awesome. injured, but not being talking about it. Uh -huh. The Krug family was a Jewish family that was directly across the street from Kaplan's. They had a shoemaking shop. Krug? Krug, K-R-O-O-P. Uh-oh. And one of their sons was named Marsh, who was about my age. And there was an older brother. And they had a shoemaking shop next to where Rodgers is now. And, uh, I and the croup boy and Loman, Al Loman, who was a little bit older, but he was in school, and we were friends. We used to play with many years. His sister was in my class. He had the barber shop next to the cabin. And um, we were all out there, and the fire engine at that time uh, was drawn by the garbage truck which was a Model T Ford. Mm. And um, before that, it was drawn by hand. My father was one of the volunteers who used to pull it. And um, it came down Main Street and got caught in the streetcar tracks and flipped over on the curve. It was going, it was going too fast. And uh, it went right into the group of people there. and. Al Loman had to have a silver plate in his head we, as a kid. Mm -hmm. and the 
croup boy was. Croup boy was all right. Oh, he was all right. Mm -hmm. It was the Loman boy that yeah, was. Yeah, seriously hurt. Now that's Loman, L-O-H. Is that right? Or there was a Lauman, L-A-U, or? I think it's L-A-U-M-A-N. Okay. There were two families, but I, and I, I haven't quite figured out. I only knew one. If they were. Um, Ziggy Loman, the older brother, became a police officer, I think. He was a great basketball player, Ziggy Loman. He was the older boy. Mm -hmm. Did you ever ride the train much? You just took the trolley. You never went anywhere by train. You were just used to having the trains go by, though it was just a part of it. Yeah, as a kid, it was my job to go to the post office every day and get the mail. The mail came in on the six o'clock train to the depot, and they put it in a, in a two-wheel push cart. And they pushed the cart up the hill to the post office, which was across from where Dennison's, where our store was. It and was where your store was? Across or the street. Across Because the Times office was on the second floor, and the post oh, office okay, was right. on the first floor. And um, before that, see, the post office was where Taylor's store is now. Yeah. Right. You know, it's very small. And I remember the black chauffeur, Dr. White's chauffeur, drove a long Hudson car. And the chauffeur had leather putties on. He really dressed up like a chauffeur, full livery with a cap. He would drive down and pick up the mail. So I'd find myself waiting for the mail to come in. You know, we'd actually wait for the push cart yeah, to come up. And you'd be with a push cart. Stacks of mails in it. With his limousine, and huh? He was over there. It wasn't a limousine, but it was a long Hudson, I remember. It was a, Hudson's at that time were very aerodynamic. We were both waiting for the mail. How old were you? Were you 10 or? I would guess. Was this a job you were hired to do? Or um, I no? worked in the store since I was six years old. Oh, okay. You were getting the mail just for your father. Oh, just for, just for our store. Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. You didn't wait until it was taken to the post office and sorted? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, we would wait for it to come up. You know, sometimes it was a little later than what it should be. It, sometimes it wasn't exactly in schedule. Or... But you did work in your dad's store? Oh, yeah. All, all my life. You know, all my, until I had to move away to all through college, mm -hmm. high school college. Oh, I could repair washing machines. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Cars that was part of your your I services. Helped the men. In that. I helped the men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then later, I would, and when the men out on the routes collecting would get two weeks off in summer, I'd go out with them first, so I'd know where they the where to collect them, mm -hmm. and then I would do their work and spell them. And I would go out selling, and uh, we had a we got a trailer that we hooked on the back of a truck, and outfitted the trailer with a kerosene operated refrigerator. A kerosene operated excuse me, hay. And we also could operate that refrigerator with a gas maker. And this had a gas maker in it with a little motor that generated electricity to run the gas maker. And you poured pentane, which was a liquid, you know, propane, butane, pentane, as you go three, four, and five carbons, it becomes a liquid. And you can pour it like gasoline. You pour it in there, and then this gas maker evaporated it through a diaphragm and you could run a gas stove or an Electrolux refrigerator off of it. And I went around the county as soon as I could drive when I was in college with this, took it to fairs, like the Harry County Fair and uh, the Fireman's Carnival and so on. And, and demonstrated. Had it demonstrated. A lot of people and didn't have electricity, is that No, why? so we sold, a lot of our washing machines were sold with these little motors like they use on lawnmowers. You know, Except you push down on, on a foot pedal to start it. Maytag multimotor. Out in the farms, so it didn't have yeah. electric. Isn't that something? You don't the ones that had electric but no gas, we could sell them a gas maker. And the ones that had neither, we'd sell them an Electrolux that operated with a kerosene burner to, to refrigerate for refrigeration. Mm -hmm. We went out, we sold our business right after Bendix brought out their first automatic washer, about a year or two after that, because it was around 
mm -hmm. washer like this. And by then, GE already had out its full well, for some years its uh, honeycomb round compressor on top of the refrigerator. But mm -hmm. um, so when did you sell Taylor's furniture? 1943. So you kept that for a few years while you still. Yeah. Had. I persuaded my father to sell. We gave it away practically, but to a nice guy, Bill Phillips. And it, we he sold still a has it? Or? Building, we sold it. Then he later bought the building. And he died. His nephew has it now. He was Marvin. Okay, he so left it to his nephew. And they've uh, really changed it from an appliance store. They don't sell appliances at all, do they? They gave up the uh, Firestone Auto Supply Division. They later gave up the jewelry business because my father was no time to receive the exam and I. Mm -hmm. and now it's then we had a full-time watchmaker in there for many, many years because he just got too busy to do that himself. But he would examine eyes as well. Did you know Bill Wallach when he worked there? Oh, so Bill used to work for a competitor for Petticord. But then he didn't. He, he then he came to Taylor's yeah. store after right. Bill Phillips bought it. Yeah. yeah, lovely guy. Yeah, he was so nice. But Petticord, you see, was our competitor for appliances. Mm-hmm. They were down. They moved into where Hope's was and where her name was later. Wise and Hope was it? At one time it yeah, was I've Wise forgotten and Hope. Wise and Hope. That's right. Uh, and they bought it from. Um, that was before my time. Yeah, I I just saw that yesterday. They the ad in, in it was talking about these two young men who were taking over this business from. Mm -hmm. Oh, John o, John Bryan, not O'Brien. John Bryan had that shop before Wise and Hope as a appliance shop. Not mm -hmm. O'Brien. That's a different family. This was B R I A N, and his was called the New Store. This was at the turn of the century, but it was the same building. I think I've taken up enough of your time, but I've really enjoyed it. And uh, really, I wanted to ask you once more now, while I'm looking at these pictures with you, when you were growing up, what these? Um, What's that picture over there? Well, this is the one I want to ask oh, Sam about. Yeah, yeah. See, this is the one that's been used so much. But mm, that's it, my grandmother. Yeah. Right. Very See, cool. this here is this stone building mm -hmm. that was torn down. See, this this, this was is the alley, and then Lowman's is on the other side. Right. Now these two stores were torn down to make way for the present store. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then Kirkwood's is off here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kirkwood's, and then the other little stone one, which was Thistle. Mm -hmm. But this alley has always been here, and that's probably saved, you know, when they've had some of these yeah. fires. That's what saved in that recent fire. That's what saved the uh, thing from going further up the All block. the way up. Right, now these two little frame houses over here that Sam has just sold. That's either part of the Catholic Church or the building between the, the church right yeah. here. That, that looks like the church. You know, Charlie Wayland has just redone yeah, these two buildings, mm -hmm. right? And uh, that's why well, I'm trying. Well, if that's my grandmother, see, I very either that or could that have been the Davises? No. You don't think so? Because I, I no. never was quite sure. No, this is my grandmother. Okay. That's her. That's, that's her face. And then would that have been your grandfather? Yes, and he, uh, you know, I wouldn't know because he no. died when I was a baby. Right. Possibly. You know, the but that, that I remember. I can remember my grandmother. Like she was a very, very industrious woman mm -hmm. and very dedicated. And uh, The um, newspaper said yesterday that for one year they went into Baltimore, 1910-11. Do you know what happened? Was it happened? Yeah. And then they came back out again. And I thought that was strange. <laughs> but I wonder if they... I'll ask Sam if he would remember. Um, again... See the, oh, I know. They were building the new store, and they always gave kind of a history. And there was a story about Rose Kaplan, uh, or about uh, Rachel. Rachel. Rachel, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, Rose is your mother. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, about Rachel Kaplan, and that she was born in England. Is that what it said? And mm -hmm. that, um, you know, just some of her history. And then it said something about this year in Baltimore, and they came back out to the little town. So I'm wondering what had gone on, whether they thought they had an opportunity in Baltimore, you know, and... There might uh, be something to that, uh, Dorota, and I'm just trying to remember, because things were tough maybe around that time, and uh, I'm trying to recall. Um, 
Well, it, you know, I always get curious. Okay, once more now, the stores when you were growing up, the, the end store here, the old stone house, what, what was in there? I'm trying to think before the, we had the Firestone store there and took it over. You had a Fancy. Firestone. Oh, yeah, Firestone Auto Supplies. Sold tires and batteries. Okay, but you stuff. ran that? Yeah. Okay. My brother and I ran it when we were in um, college. Okay. That was in the late 30s. Mm. And we still had it when the war broke out, I know. Okay. Well, we had it when we sold it. Now, the Planned Parenthood was on the second floor, and they went in this okay. door. There's a door right here. Mm-hmm. You can vaguely see. Now, was that charity? Did your father let them use that? I don't know. Or, okay. No, I think they paid rent. Do you think there was a third story? Was it? Mm -hmm. Did it have this mansard roof oh, yeah. and everything? Oh, yeah. Nothing changed. Okay. Okay, then the little... That's a shoemaker shop. That was a shoemaker. Did you own these? Uh, eventually, but not at this um, time. When we owned up to no, we didn't own this. We owned up just the first building. Okay. Then Bill Phelps bought these next two, and then mm -hmm. he rented this one. Okay. And then what? What was this? And that was the Greek restaurant on that. Belashus. Put down with a question mark. V L A S. H O S. Now, that could be really far off the mark. Okay, I might run into it uh, in the newspaper. But it was definitely a restaurant. Okay. Now, this was built by Parlette for. No, that's his before Parlette's time. It was? Mm -hmm. and what was used? What was it used for before? When Richard had the up place over on the mm -hmm. other side, and he may have gone back of that, um, I think it was always a garage there. I'm not sure. Okay, like for repairing. Mm hmm cars or I should know that. but then when when Ridge, when Parlette's had it it said Parlette Ford yes. or something yes. across there I saw a picture mm -hmm. of it before they went to Normandy yeah okay and then did they build this did Parlette build this newer brick building out front no I think that was there in fact I think there was a covered public station thing out here okay no, I think it, that hasn't changed since you know okay. yeah well, you know, Mr. Shipley's fire book said that there was a fire in 1915 that burned all of the buildings. That's right. Where? Right. And then those newer ones were built. And then mm -hmm. this that's why this was a vacant lot when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Because, um, and that this building was damaged but not burned. Mm -hmm. So that that... Harrison Shipley's father, first, really, he was the fire department yeah. for many years. Harrison's father's sister, Hilda, is still in the business office at Taylor's store. Is that right? She came to work for us, the first job out of high school, and she's there to work for us. She's got to be 80. In her upper 70s. Well, Mr. Shipley. 77, probably. Hilda's about 77. Well, that's his aunt? That's his aunt. So she was much younger then? She was the youngest in the family. Oh, boy. Oh, her, oh his, his father. Harrison's father was a mean guy. He even told us that he was mean. <laughs> mean? Oh, that mean? He was mean. He was very, uh, uh, but he was very good mechanic. Top uh -huh. mechanic. Whatever he fixed, he fixed it right. I mean, he was the top mechanic in most of But he was a terrible person to get along with. He was just honored. Huh. He was very um, impolite and um, <laughs> self centered. And, huh. you know, but he was. Pops as a fire chief and as an attorney. You kept them moving, huh? Yeah. Somewhere I read. And Harrison is the nice he can be. Right. Yeah. That Mr. Fahey built this. Now the the F A H E Y. Right. But well, when I read something that Celia Holland wrote, she wrote that he was one of the early Catholics in the eighteen thirties that was here and that's why they formed Saint Paul's Church, because of the new influx mm. of, of Irish and German. You know, and now there were more Catholic Catholics. City's always so. been a Catholic town, principally, I'd say. After the Quakers left. Yeah. Right. I'd say, yeah, uh, more Catholics than any other denomination. Uh, At so least it seemed to me. This uh, building could go back to 1840s or so. You know, maybe, and then... Oh, well, it's an old, granite building. Yeah, yeah, and then a new uh, roof mm -hmm. could have been put on to join them, you know, when this one was built or something. Yeah, this is the most recent part, no question. This uh -huh. is a concrete block building. You know, 
way back in 1804, when the Ellicotts were here, they leased this corner, and there was an oil and carting mill there. Now, I haven't been able to quite figure out. You know, the deeds yeah. to that, to the, to the mill, uh, the Tiber bed Call below it the that. oil mill seat. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what it's referring to, Joseph Atkinson's old oil and wool carting mill. But I can't tie it to anything physically, you know. Well, you're getting there. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't, I don't think I'm going to ever solve that one, mm -hmm. but that's why, uh, you know, it's so... It's, it's so puzzling because we're talking about 200 years or 250 yeah. years, and you know what happens to buildings. <laughs> and you know, up, I think I told you up until a few years ago, there were three surviving founders of the Ellicott City Railroad Club was founded, I think, in 1928. And they were Ben Miller, the pharmacist, who became the clerk, mm -hmm. and Sam Kaplan, and my father. Oh, my gosh. They were the founders of the Railroad Club. Mm -hmm. And we had them all three together here in this room oh, okay. all right. uh, about a year before Ben Miller died. And uh, Ben was such a lovely guy. Uh -huh. He was tall, and you, I'd watch him walk down the street. kind of went down there like a uh, mind video. Uh, he was the guy that uh, the movie actor, James Gray. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Tall and lanky, and maybe tall than that. Kind of Dr. Ben. Everybody yeah. called him Dr. Yeah. Ben. He would walk down the street from his house and walk on the other side of the street and see him past the Howard house. And, and he lived? At his pharmacy. He oh. lived up on Hill Street. Oh, yes, yes, right. Oh, he was going down to the pharmacy, mm -hmm. yes, okay. Uh, he owned a lot of property, too, yes. through the years, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and see, he and his father in law was Herman Carr. Oh, so I one see. Of them, okay. One of them, I think it was Herman, had the Herman and Carr Insurance Agency. So okay. They kind of got involved in, you know, in real, real estate. estate. Yeah. You can Herman Carr was in that first stone building about bodies. Yeah, yeah. I call it the Alma Pussycat today, but it, yeah. it's the Oddfellows Lodge. Yes, yeah. under above it. And then on the second floor there, yeah. at the other end, was the Collettes lived. And Frank Collette was the engineer to the Shipley, to Harry Shipley. And what building was and that Frank in? Collette was also a Miller Chevrolet mechanic. And I went to school with all his kids. Uh -huh. Did Shipley and work for Miller Chevrolet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's where he worked. Yeah. But he lived above a fire station. Exactly, across the street. Uh -huh. But that was a volunteer thing? I mean, they provided him. He, he was, he got his, his quarters for free. Did he move down to the new fire station in 39? I think so. I, th I think Mr. Shipley told me that was a... Uh, an agreement that he Yeah, I think so. I think that was the only compensation he got. Yeah. But he was, uh, without him, but he and, and uh, let's see, two or three others, Buck DeBosier, Buck Ditch, um, and a guy named Hill. And he was a very patrician guy. Do you ever uh, go to high school reunions, or mm -hmm. do you? I missed my 50th year, and I, I told him when I'd be here, and then things changed, and I couldn't be here. I was 3,000 miles away, and I never forgave them or myself. <laughs> so How many are left in your 50th? We only had 24, mm -hmm. and so the next year, two years later, we had another one last year because Pete Olson hadn't shown up, and I hadn't shown up, so Pete and I showed and we had about 12. There were 14 at that one, I think, of the 24. And three had died. Is only three had died? Yeah, maybe four. Oh my gosh, well I'm going uh, If you want to find out, you can get in touch with them from the city, Dr. Dora. Okay. In other words, the store you, you and your mo uh, your mother owned both of these stores and rented the, the granite the building, building next, next door. door. That, yeah. that was rented to Levinson as for a saloon. And uh, who's standing in the doorway here? Can you see? Yeah, that's like an oil cloth they put out. Hmm? That's oil cloth they put out uh, to, to put merchandise sometimes out there. It's a roll of oil cloth. It's a oil cloth.
I was Sam Hillen. The next door building was a stone building. Who is Sam? Who's standing in the? Uh, who's standing? Who's standing in the doorway there? Can That's you make? Oh, the mother. Sure, I can make that. <laughs> the stone building. Did you tear that down when you built your new building? Oh yes. When we put up a brand new building, we tore that down and this building down. Uh, the two buildings may came with the one we have now. Now, the building next door, Kirkwood's yes. building? That's still the uh, same building. Was it a part of this building? No. That building is, part, is one we own that we rented to a man named Robinson who became a a millionaire. He was a very poor man when he came to Ellicott City. Did he become rich in Ellicott City or somewhere else? Rich in Ellicott City and his daughter. Well, one son Emerson became a justice of the peace in Baltimore City. He's still living, he may. I don't know if he is, I don't know. And his daughter, Ada, married a man named Dr. Dorf. Did you ever hear? the name Davy Jones, David Jones connected with that building. The, the name Jones. 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 No, I found some of Jones's name in the deed. To this building. I think, I don't know whether, no, I think it was this building here, the stone building. Stone. Did you find the name Mary Stimmer? Who? Stimmer. Stimmer. S-T-I-M-M-E-R. Oh, no, I never heard of that name. Okay. You think you heard David Jones with this property? Stone Boy. You didn't... But that's my mother and father. There's no question okay. about that. You recognize that? Oh, yes. That's a good... When do you think that was taken? That's a good picture of Papa. I think he was wearing a bowler. Huh? He was wearing a bowler. A bowler. Uh, uh, a bowler hat. He's wearing a bowler hat. Oh, Papa, well, Papa will wear a derby. A derby. The Kirkwood store. Did you own that? The Kirkwood building? No, we didn't. Never? You don't? Later. Later. Later, well, later on, I think we bought it. Uh -huh. we bought, yes, we bought that building. Was there anything surprising when you tore this down, do you think? This is a very old stone building. No, we tore it down, tore both down in order to build the one we got. Uh -huh. Was there, was that? It's hard to tell, but I, I think it could have been, you know, like a hundred years old when you tore it down. No question about that. Do you think it was very old? Um, but you tore it down in 1925. Now this is not Kirkwood's building next no, to us. No. That, that, that was a saloon that we rented yeah. to a yes. man for $35 a month. The, the, 